Now we're doing another repair on a 4L60E video. I've got a VY Commodore Calais 2003 model, 3.8 litre V6. And the problem is it's taking off in limp mode or third gear. You can uh, manually select it through the gears, get it go, to go to second gear um, as you're slowing down but it won't go back in the first. It won't go in the first and it won't go in the top and taking off in third. So we're just going to put the scanner on and see if we can find anything. And you can see the engine lights flashing. He's done about, uh, what is it? 240,000 I think it is. Just going to do a quick uh, generic scan of it, see if we can get a code up. Uh, we know there's a problem with electrical problem either with solenoids, uh, with the wiring, or even the computer. Uh, nothing found on the generic one. One, two, shift solenoid we've got. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear the code and just take for another test run and see what happens if it does take off in um, in first gear and we'll just check to see if the code's still there okay so we've cleared the code so I'm just going to take for a test run now okay, just back from a test run uh, it's still doing the same thing just taking off in a third which is limp mode and uh, manually you can change it into second gear uh, it won't go into first gear manually or, or when it's in drive or it won't go into top gear. Just having a little visual check, make sure there's no oil leaks anywhere. Got a little bit on the power steering there. But the transmission looks pretty dry. And we'll just check these unis, universal joints. And the centre bearing probably will need replacing in the near future. You can see the rubber's perished at the top end there. It won't be long before it needs replacing. It's also hanging down at the bottom end, not in the centre of where it should be. OK, here I've got the GM uh, shop manual. And if we have a look, that code that we had, the 1-2 shift solenoid, is apply it's on in first and fourth gear so basically it's exactly problem that we've got that solenoid's probably not coming on or it's stuck in the off positions that's why we've only got second and third gear uh, first and sec uh, first and fourth aren't able to be applied it's still worth checking all the solenoids because once one gets contaminated or worn, um, usually indication that the other ones aren't far behind it anyway. Okay, and here we have the shift A or the 1 2 shift solenoid, the one that's playing up, and the shift B, which is the 2 3 shift solenoid. In other videos, you can see me flush these manifold switch plates will actually do the same with this one and then you've got your 3-2 solenoid which is on the passenger side or the left hand side of the vehicle you've got your pulse width modulated solenoid for the torque converter and you've got your torque converter solenoid which goes into the pump and over here you've got your pressure control solenoid um, you have to remove this servo cover just so you can get that one out so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take out both the shift solenoids test them replace this one and I'll test the other one just make sure they're not leaking and within specs definitely take that switch plate off and flush that out just pop these two terminals off and they just slide out that way and then in here you've got a little spring steel clip You've got to just make sure you support the solenoid. One of them has a spring that'll push the whole thing out and you might lose your spring or whatever. So just support it till you get it out and then it'll just sit there properly. Just got that plug off and you just, just support it with your hand. Otherwise you can end up going too far and breaking it. 
and it just comes out like that. And then we just, I'll take this one out first. You see the little, there's a little clip there to support it. You just lever that clip out with a screwdriver. And there's the clip. And you can see that one's under tension. There's a spring there that can all fly out sometimes. And we do the same. This one doesn't have a spring on it, on the valve. That one won't pop out like the other one. Okay, we've got the solenoid, the 1-2 shift or shift A solenoid on our little bench tester. Got it set to 10.5 volts. That's considered a flat battery uh, anywhere below that. And I've just tested the resistance there. There's no continuity there, so um, it's playing up. But I've hooked it up to 65 psi air pressure. And if I just hit the trigger there, a bit hard to do. It's not working at all. It's locked up. You can see I'm hitting the switch there. There's current going through, but it's not working. I'll just show you the other one and we'll just see how the other one works. Over, I've got the one two shift valve or the shift A that wasn't working, and this one's the two three shift valve. that one's working at power off, working, power on, and it's not even leaking. There is a fair bit of rubbish coming out of it. You can see that one's operating as it should be. And if I show you up on here a little, you can see it's still holding 10.4 volts. You can see it's working quite well. And it's not leaking. So that shift A is playing up. Now I've got the reconditioned one. Um, you can pull these apart and flush them out and test them. And you can hear this one will actually even work click without the air pressure. With the air pressure. The air pressure is actually just replacing the oil, oil pressure. You can see it's working even without the air, so you can test them like that. Um, ideally, once they start leaking, um, you need to replace them as well. That's why it's a good idea to air pressure test them and uh, check to make sure that you've got the right resistance there. And that's working properly. So we're going to replace this one. That's the old 1-2 uh, shoot. Uh, and we've just flushed this one out, tested it, and this one's a Rico one. There's just quickly a chart shows the resistance and how many amps it should be the different solenoids should be running at. This one's off a off our uh, Trans X, I think it was called, but we don't use it as often as we used to. You can see the Shift A and Shift B, or the one two and two three solenoids are uh, between 20 and 40 ohm resistance, so it's, there's quite a bit of variance there. This is out of the GM manual. You can see how they operate internally. You've got the little plunger and a little metering check ball that either opens or closes the port there. And I'll just put the Rico one on the one two shift. We just slowly, you don't just force it in, you t twist it a little bit just so you don't rip that o-ring and you just push that little clip in that'll hold it and we do the same with the other one we haven't replaced this one we've only replaced that one this one is checking out okay and of course you don't forget to put these clips back on okay while i've got this plug out of the switch plate i'll just whiz that off 10 mil 8 mil and we'll give that a flush out as well They're the three 10 mil and two shorter ones are uh, 8 mil. Now I have mentioned in other videos if you want to do a proper service on 
any transmission with a manifold switch plate 4L60Es, 4L80Es as well as others it's a good idea to just flush out all this rubbish it will accumulate on the little pressure switch there and cause trouble eventually when it shorts out the, the wiring they will flush out quite well generally unless that metal gets in underneath they have these little o-rings that stop a lot of it from going through but over time these seals harden um, and you might end up getting rubbish under there um, in the old days they didn't have this plastic cover on there so you could actually test the resistance there between just to make sure it's got continuity they're just on or, on or off pressure switches now you can't really do that so I'll just flush this one out and uh, lightly blow it out they are quite it's like a really thin little bit of plastic that sits over the top of that so it's important not to blast it with full pressure air pressure or you can do more damage than good if you can't flush them out 100% then it's probably a good idea to replace it you can see it's actually cleaning up quite well and would you look at that it's come up like new you can see no fine metals got in underneath there and it looks bloody good Alrighty. take out the 3-2 solenoid and the PWM solenoid or the pulse width modulated solenoid I'm not going to uh, take out the torque converter clutch solenoid they're usually attached to the, the whole loom sometimes you can replace them if you cut the wires and just replace just the solenoid if it's faulty and also it's a little bit extra work to to take this one out the pressure control solenoid you've got to take that servo cover off so i'm just going to do these two solenoids here just test them and flush them out as well same as before we just take that clip off just you've got to do it with two hands just to support that clip so you don't break it and it just slides out and in here you'll find in that little slot there you'll find that there's a little clip that you need to poke a screwdriver into and it'll come out just always good idea to support the solenoid so it just doesn't fly out and the same as this one here we'll do the same there there's a little clip these will fling out so just be careful of that you don't lose it we just wriggle this one out let's do that like that and take this one out again there's a little clip just careful it doesn't fly out or if it does fly out make sure you catch it in a tray or something and we just wriggle this out just so we don't wreck that seal I'm just showing you this this one they look very similar um, you can't mess them up because if you have a look at the plugs you'll see that the one on the right this one with the pink plug um, on the left hand side it's got a wider bit where that plug pushes in the grey one has the wider bit on the right hand side if you see there where my thumb is so you can't mess them up these plugs usually be white they're stained from the transmission fluid but they can be brown as well and there's also a little diaphragm in there that tears when that happens the little plunger inside will wiggle around too much and it can't operate as it should be so I'll just do the uh, check the resistances in these make sure they're within specs blow them out and I'll just bench test them as well make sure they're not leaking now I've just uh, flushed them out just tested them they're within specs you can see even without air I can you can hear it clicking but the problem is is if it's leaking so I'm going to apply the air now and these are normally closed and when I apply power to it they will bleed out and this one's actually sticking you can see there we go it's locked up again so I'm 
sometimes by doing this a few times will free it up. But because we had an in intermittent um, intermittently it was going off or not working properly or not bleeding out I'll replace this 3-2 solenoid and you can also hear, I don't know if you can hear that it is leaking slightly they shouldn't leak at all okay, I've got the PWM pulse width modulated solenoid for the torque converter you can hear that one clicking I just pressure tested it so there was a little bit of air in there but that one seems to be sealing really well and now I'm applying air not leaking now this is just a rough test the way you actually test these is by alternating the amperage unit um, there are pulse width modulated, which means the amperage is increased or reduced to actually get it to work. But you can test them like that just to get a rough indicator. And that one seems to be sealing really well. It's not leaking at all. So we're going to replace the 3-2 solenoid. We'll just keep this one. Okay, putting them back on, we've got the Rico one push it in and instead of just pushing it in you slowly turn it a little bit just so that seal doesn't get cut we grab one of the, the little clips and just push it in and that'll just snap in like that and then you can rotate it push that plug back in like so and this one we just flushed out that one wasn't leaking seem to be working okay same sort of thing same deal we just rotate it as we're slowly pushing it in put the clip back in snaps back in and don't forget to put the plug back on there we go we'll just replace the filter now clean the pan up clean the magnet in the pan and uh, we might have to clear that fault code again and then take for a test run put the filter back in they just push straight up uh, make sure that there is a good resistance of that seal in there um, otherwise it can end up sucking a bit of air and as per usual instead of putting the magnet back in here I'm just going to put it up on that little ridge there just again so there's more surface area of that magnet working, top and bottom. And we're going to start off by putting 4 litres of the Tri-Tech Dextron 3 fluid in the transmission and uh, test the oil level with the motor running. Just got the motor running, it's at the bottom mark there, I've put 4 litres in. I'll just turn it off now, clear that code and take for a test run. Just back from the test drive, it's taking off in first gear now, going all the way up into top gear or fourth gear, and there's no more little fault light coming on the dash. I'm just going to check the oil level, make sure it's at the top mark, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Thank you for watching.